going to the Y yet again. Uh, you know, I've been going to a metro for a while, but I keep lifting so late in the day that, you know, I don't want to drive that far. And, I mean, for chest, uh, well, you know, for most muscle groups, all you have to do is do movements that fit a certain criteria of the lift. All right, so for me, chest, I, uh, I want to start off with some kind of heavy pressing movement. Now, the Y has, an, has a Smith machine. I was about to say an incline Smith machine, because that's all I fucking do on it. And, uh, you know, they got an incline barbell bench. That fits my criteria for the heavy pressing. Now, there's an incline hammer strength machine at the Metro, which I do like, but I don't have to do it every chest day. So, basic plan, you know, like I said, heavy pressing in the beginning, and then, you know, maybe some more uh, isolation, cable, pressing slash flies to finish off chest. Uh, that's all I'm going to have to do. So, uh, in terms of the split, I still get questions about it. Right. What I do now is day one, I'll do legs, right, hamstrings and quads. The next day is going to be chest. The day afterwards will be back. And the day after back is buys and tries, arms. And then after arms, I just go back to legs. And I just repeat. You know, I'll throw shoulders in every so often. But for me, they're developed enough to the point where, you know, they're almost overdeveloped compared to, uh, you know, my arms. But I used to do push-pull. No, no, what am I saying? Before I did this, I was doing uh, the Arnold split, right? So legs, chest and back, and then arms. But, you know, I would, fin I would do chest first. And then, by the time I got to back, you know, my I just had a crazy chest workout. You know, by the time I get to back, I'm just, like, fatigued. It's, it's not, it didn't end up being a really good lift. Like, sure, I could still get a really good pump. But I just wouldn't be as strong, the lift wouldn't be as intense, you know. Chest uh, sort of put me out and then compromised back. So for me it made more sense to just split chest and back up into their own individual days. So rather than doing like, you know, a split where you hit everything twice a week, which pretty much is typical, you know, push pull legs or Arnold, that's usually the frequency that you guys do or that you know people do when they, when they do those splits you know, I'm doing an eight-day split essentially right hit everything every four days and in turn every eight days rest days if I think I need it I'll take one and I think that's what your approach should be to it as well right but unless you're like a power lifter where you're really worried about um, central nervous system fatigue or your CMS and stuff, because I think there's legitimacy to that argument, right? Like, oh, your central nervous system is fried. Uh, I think you can fry it if you do, like, seriously heavy singles, you know? Like, if you were to do some heavy-ass singles, like, completely maxed out 95% of your uh, of your max, you know, I don't really know the, the jargon that they use on a power lifter. But if you spend a whole day doing max effort one reps, or like doubles, then yeah, sure, maybe your central nervous system is fatigued. But just after doing an arm day, do you really need a rest day after that? No, you can go in and hit whatever your next muscle group is. Right. For me, rest days get sort of, uh, they get queued up only if I'm sick. And by sick, I mean like really sick. You know, if I'm just kind of got a stomach ache or something or a cough, come on, I'm still going. That's, that'd be crazy not to. Or if I'm like busy and got school shit to do or just general life, you know, because you know, sometimes just outside circumstances are going to get in the way of your training. So if you have a planned rest day and you have to take the day off before that, it's right. I just feel like taking them instinctually is the best way to go. And that's how I've done it forever, ever since the beginning. You know, my mentality has always been, you wake up every day, you fucking eat food every day, you can train every day. Right? 
Not to, uh, you know, not to sound like Liver King, but I don't think people just took a day off from going on their primal hunts just because they went on a hunt the day before. And they're like, well, we're... I can tell my shoulders are still sore. I can't throw my spear. Let's just let's just stay home in the teepee or uh, the cave. How primal am I? How primal does is he talking about when he says when he's talking about primal living? Is this like cavemen or is this whatever? So chest, I'm gonna get hyped up. Uh, I'll I'll show a little bit of the warm up this time. You guys were kind of asking for that. You know, usually I just jump right into uh, recording the first heavy set of bench, but I don't just <laughs> load up three plates or whatever and just go straight for it cold. All right, that is ridiculous. So let's uh, let's get into the the process of getting into that heavy set. Huh? May as well aim for twenty. Didn't mean to lie to you about the warm-up. Uh, I just wanted to get right into it. I didn't want to talk during it. But all I did was I sit on the cable, do some tricep push-downs, light single arm one at a time, do some one-arm face pulls, do like some rows, get a little lat activation, and then sort of position myself sideways to the cable and just do some, uh, some pec activations. And by then my whole upper Upper body area should be pretty warm. So I was contemplating four plates, but I wasn't sure I would have the the right technique. Because I've been doing just Smith machine for like the last three days. Three chest days or something. So three plates now. May do the rep slightly slower, a little wider grip. Should fucking burn. That last rep was a fucking grinder, holy shit. All right. Oh my god. Okay. I'll ask for one of the next one. So, four sets of the heavy bench, that's going to be enough. Uh, you know, I haven't done an inclined bench with a barbell for like a couple of lifts, but still the strength's still there. You know, just by doing any heavy pressing, you're stimulating your fucking chest. So whether or not you love inclined smith or hammer strength or dumbbell, right? Personally, I've been on an inclined barbell and inclined smith machine kick. But any kind of heavy pressing, you're fucking working your chest. So now I'm going to move on to... Uh, you know, basically bent over cable press. Decent weight, 
But, you know, with the cables, since when I get to the top, the cables are still at an angle. And they're trying to pull my hands apart. I can really squeeze hard. So I might sit here for four sets. I don't know. As long as it feels good, I'm going to keep throwing it around. All right. Let's uh, oh, let's do some pack deck. Nothing, um, nothing really fancy here. Just the stack, you know, really burn out. Uh, I can't really add weight to this one. There's a like the plate would run into the actual like machine. So I guess I'm just stuck with the stack. And again, I'm gonna have my fucking arms like this. I'm not gonna do them like this. I think this is fucking stupid. All right, come on. One more. Okay. One set of cables. I'll do a cable drop set and then we're done. Oh, no, I'm done there. Oh, yeah, you're totally good. Yeah, I'll put this on this side. There we go. Okay, so basic logic of me doing just one set of these flies is, you know, for one thing, the cables feel a little different than the, the pack jack, but it also gives me the added benefit of doing them at different angles. So, actually, is this arm? Are they? Okay, no, never mind. We're good. That's the right height I like. So the first section of the set, right, like set, let's just say part A, you know, it's going to be, you know, normal here out wide to a little bit above shoulder height so I can really work on my upper chest. But then I'll drop the weight and instead of doing the pec slides in front of me, I'll kind of do them downward, like towards my, uh, like my belly button-ish, you know, my waistband. You know, I'm not really a massive lower pec working uh, kind of guy in my chest days but you need to get a good stretch and I, honestly i feel like it gives me a fucking fuller pump at the end just from well you know twofold this feeling of having the weight pull you upward like this super good stretch and then squeezing at the bottom i don't know i just fucking just everything gets tight so let's just th throw this around and then i go check the pump I dropped a little. Come on, get Let's go check the pump. 
exposure slightly down. Perfect. So, I'd say I'm back to fucking 100 freaking percent on chest. Uh, if you've been paying, you know, at least decently close attention, I think it was maybe two weeks ago or something. I did a chest day and I pulled the left one a little to the point where I took a whole day off in the next chest day. And just uh, by way of easing back into it, plus, you know, bulking, eating a lot of food, having a lot of energy, and not doing anything that hurts it more, we back. We back. Right? I went from, uh, what's the fucking meme? It's like, we're so done to we so back. You, you get what we're saying. You get what I'm freaking saying. But even just sitting here, like, <laughs> I know I'm going to have trouble taking this fucking shirt off. At least a little. So let's, uh, uh, let's just get right to it. God damn it. Whew. Like reaching in front of me across, like I'm fucking running into my chest. Ooh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's what we're talking about. That's the name of the game. Ooh. All right, that's, uh, that's confirmed freaky, I tell you what. Let's say a little lat spread. So before I do any kind of lat spread, or honestly any pose where the upper body is like kind of the focus, right? you'll notice I always take a big breath and then try to blow all the air out of my system. Right, the point there, <laughs> I don't need my insides being full of air. It's gonna make my stomach bigger, right? The whole point of fucking posing and all that shit is having a trim waist and a wide, you know, shoulder, whatever else, you know, that sort of triangle Dorito look. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's uh. That's pretty much what we're fucking looking for here. Uh, what else is there? Maybe this one? Ooh. Almost lost my balance. All right, that's, uh, that's pretty much all the chest poses I know. Most muscular, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I've said this before. Most muscular feels so silly, right? Like there's some dignity in just a filthy side chest, but <laughs> it's such a pure flex to go like, like that, you know, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, fucking what was so complicated about that lift, right? I could have done Smith machine. I could have done an incline press or dumbbells for the beginning. There's nothing special about the barbell bench, apart from the fact that I just liked it. You know, like I, uh, I think people kind of get the misconception that they want to follow people's specific workouts, right? Like if you were to watch this video and think to yourself, okay, this is the secret four sets of bench, four sets of uh, cable press, two sets of pec deck, and one set of cable flies. Like, that's a good workout, but that's not, like, I didn't reach into my archive of, uh, you know, workouts that I have written out or, you know, look up this workout and think, okay, this will be good, right? What I'm doing is just following basic training principles, which, you know, in this specific case of chest, ended up being heavy pressing, followed by squeezing movements, you know, flies or converging cable press. And guess what? At the end of it, I was fucking pumped. So if you follow, if you, um, if rather than focusing on like learning specific workouts for a muscle, right, 
if you try to learn sort of the, uh, the basic framework of a workout for each muscle, then you can do whatever the fuck you want, right? Like for me with biceps, uh, I, there's no need for, there is no compound lift for biceps. So all I do is curls. So since I know that, and I know I'm gonna do about, you know, eight to 12 sets for body part each lift, you know, by the time I've done that money, that money, by the time I've done that many hard sets, I should be fully pumped, which is, you know, a decent indicator that you're done, right? Well, well, okay, what I'm trying to say is for biceps, I know I can just go to any curl of any variety I want. And obviously I want to start off heavy on the beginning when I'm fresh, but if I just sit there and do 11 sets of curls of whatever variety the fuck I want and start from heavy and then transition lighter as I get weaker to more lighter squeezing movements at the end, then I'm going to get a fucking bicep pump. And I don't have to follow a specific workout. I just have to follow that specific framework. So in the context of chest, right, heavy pressing followed by, you know, potentially just lighter pressing where you can squeeze and some flies, right? I can do whatever combination of movements I want that fit that criteria, right? I don't want to say an infinite number of workouts. You know, mathematically, I'm sure some nerd could do the math and find out how many there are if whatever. But, you know, if barbell bench doesn't feel good for me, if inclined barbell doesn't feel good, guess what? I'll just move on to dumbbell, right? Or I can move on to Smith machine or <laughs> incline press, you know, there's no specific workout that is just going to make you grow and stimulate growth. But there are specific frameworks of workouts, which, you know, if you think about it logically are at least more than likely going to be effective. You know, I'm not saying that there's one perfect answer to everything. And if there is, you know, I'm never going to know it, but you know, looking at my results so far and, you know, basic logic, you know, also comparing it to what other people do. I think I've got a basic idea of what I need to do for me, which is going to, you know, let me get big. And for the most part, you know, I think it's going to translate to you as well, right? If for chest, you were to follow, you know, my kind of framework of heavy pressing, squeezing movements at the end, Guess what? You're probably going to fucking grow as long as you go hard and eat your food. Like things that kind of upset me that I see, uh, let's just, you know, focus on chest training is, uh, I think it's not in your best interest to do pec flies before bench or heavy pressing, you know? Now, if you have an extenuating circumstance, like an injury or you're fucking, let's say your shoulder is beyond jacked and you just can't go that heavy. Well, then maybe it would make sense to pre-exhaust yourself so that you can do pressing movements lighter and still you'd be able to go hard. But, you know, if all your joints are in order, then I think the body responds to a heavy stimulus. You know, that's why I'm not just gonna go and do two plates for 20 really slow and like squeeze it like crazy. You know, I fucking like going heavy. Now again, Use your best judgment, try to understand or try to, uh, you know, digest things that I tell you logically and make sure they make sense to you. But, you know, if you've been doing a chest day where you start off with three sets of pec flies before you do any kind of bench or pressing, I would, I would say you're going to want to try flipping that around. Let's go slam the cluster dextrin shake and get the, get the heck out of here. All right, so... That was a good ass lift. Right. The more often that you can get, sit in the car after you go to the gym and say, that was a good pump. I went hard. Not much else I could have done to stimulate some chest growth. The better, you know, the better. If you got some bad days. Uh, I mean, it's not ideal, but you know, if you let that get to you and you like take some time off the gym, you're like, ah, I'm not feeling it. Then that's really going to fuck with you. You know, like the guy who uh, has a fucking bad day at the gym for whatever reason, let's say like he got zero, uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll just, I'll just make this analogy anyway. Let's say he got zero sleep, whatever, he just feels like shit, right? The fact that he still went to the gym, I think that says something, right? 
Now, whether or not it may have been more productive for him to stay home and rest, hydrate, fuel up, you know, that may be the objectively correct method, right? Like if I got absolutely zero sleep and I felt like trash, you know, uh, at this point, I think it would probably be in my best interest to just fuel up. Like, let's say I'm really fucking tired, right? Might be in my best interest to eat a lot of food or eat my normal amount of food, you know, drink a lot of liquids, electrolytes, like I always fucking tell you guys, and get some sleep. But going into the gym when you don't feel like it, you know, people who can do that, you know, those are, I feel, the people who are going to be distinguished from the general population of the gym. But uh, like I was saying, the more good lifts you can have under your belt, the better, right? That shit starts to add up. So don't get too discouraged if, you're, uh, if your pump wasn't there, if you were a little bit weaker that day. Or, you know, whatever. So let's just slam this and roll. So, in the topic of uh, intensity of training, I really think a lot of people are slacking. I really think that the majority of people in the gym are, well, okay, maybe not the majority. I won't, I won't say it like that, but I, I'll say it's very rare for me to look at somebody in the gym or, you know, see someone out of the corner of my eye seriously going crazy hard right i really just don't see it too much you know now i mean that could just be subjective that might just be me just like hating but uh i think a good example like probably the hardest the hardest set i do is probably uh probably squats that's where i go the craziest but you know i'm fucking making noise taking a second you know, before I, uh, like the two leg days ago, right, when I went up for my top set of squats, I'm standing in front of the rack, <sighs> like really fucking going crazy. You know, I don't really see that too often, right? No, I'm not saying that's absolutely necessary all the time, especially to, to be making noise and fucking being disruptive. Uh, I'm not saying that's the fucking best way to do it, but, you know, I'm just kind of proposing the question to you to ask yourself like, have you really been have I really been going that hard lately you know I for me over the last uh, at this point I think it's been five years that I've been going to the gym and, uh, and lifting you know every few months well maybe not few but probably every like six or six or so months I kind of look at myself uh, and I I sort of I have this self-reflection I'm like Okay, have I really been going that hard? I could go harder than this, right? And usually that comes with, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe I watched, maybe I saw like a workout edit or something, or maybe I saw someone in the gym who was like, you know, really impressed me, right? The more often that you can ask yourself, okay, have I really been going hard? Right? Have I really been doing all I can? Right? It's probably going to fucking lead to some some more motivation, right? Some more discipline, some more intensity in the gym. You know, the, uh, oh, I was about to say something. I was about to say something good. Now I forget it. Fuck. It was right there. Oh, I was on the tip of my tongue. I was going to say this analogy. Oh. Well, if I had gone into the ethos, I guess. But, you know, you get what I'm saying. Right? The more often that you can do a set and think to yourself, you know, truly, right? Not just like delusionally because you actually didn't go that hard, but you tell yourself you went hard, right? The more often that you can do a set of bench or a set of curls or whatever, and when you rack the weight, you know, you go, oh, oh you know, like, that was good. That was a good one, right? But, oh, wait, no, I think I, I'm, I was just starting to remember. Yeah, yeah, okay, so I think I remember what I was about to say. So what I think 
will kind of help determine how hard you can go, right? Isn't even necessarily the people that lift around you, right? You know, now we're in the realm of social media. You know, you've got exposure to the top 0.001% of any field, right? This, I guess this doesn't even apply to lifting, even though, you know, for me, most anything I fucking talk about applies to lifting, right? So if somebody is watching the guy next to them at the gym, or maybe just their gym buddy, or whatever, you know, you're a high school dude, and you're only comparing yourself to them, then, you know, how would you really expect to keep going that far, right? I'm not saying you have to compare yourself to, like, Mr. Olympia, Chris Bumstead, or, you know, any other absolute freaks, you know, but if you limit your potential to just, like, uh, I don't know, something within your reach, then you're never going to get anything cool, at least in terms of, like, you know, strength and size, right? If somebody, I don't know, I just think it's kind of foolish for someone to think, oh, well, I could never bench this, or, well, I could never do this, or, you know, I could never get that lean, right? I don't, (laughs) I don't actually remember the last time I thought I could never insert, you know? Uh, Now, whether or not that's just delusion on my part, you know, I think, having grandiose goals, especially in the beginning, if you're, you know, aspiring to something crazy, then it's, it's probably in your best interest to have a little bit of delusion, right? Or else you you may be, um, prone to, uh, or prone to give up. You get what I'm saying? But, uh, I guess main point I'm trying to say is, uh, aim high. That's not really the main point I was trying to say. Uh, whatever, you get what... Basic, and basic point overarching of this whole talk so far. Just fucking make sure you go hard. If you go hard every lift, you're definitely going to make some progress. And then, you know, if you couple that, if you couple a solid training routine with tracking your macros, with the uh, stupid simple macro tracker, I'll add a little animation. You like that? Uh, free on the App Store. <laughs> you know, and you actually track your protein and your carbs and fats. Make sure you take your multivitamin, fish oil. Uh, try to get maybe a little bit more sleep. I think we could all use a bit more sleep. And if you really want to get crazy, you know, because apparently this is a very difficult thing to do, you could add some daily cardio. Then guess what? You're going to start to notice some gains. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. So, blah, blah, blah. The, I think the pose down talk about the chest workouts was a bit more insightful than this, but there's some good ideas floating around in the car tonight. So, plan for me now. Uh, I think I'm going to get some Wendy's. Go to order has been a spicy chicken, a large fry, a large strawberry frosty, and that's it. That's typically my go-to. How about this? Let's let's just wait a couple months for the Sam Sulik Wendy's meal. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But uh, yeah, so home food, food, vitamins, maybe a little bit of Counter Strike, and then bed. Back tomorrow should be a freaky pump. Not sure where I'm going to lift, but I guess you'll fucking see. So I will see you next time.